Hey everyone, in this video we're going to have a recap of the top 5 actor framework overrides which are pre-launch net, actor core, stop core, handle error and handle last act core. To help us out I'm going to be using the chat room example I've been using throughout this series but I completed it a bit more so we're using all of the overrides. And as always the code is available on my github page github.com forward slash Tom's Lab View Adventure. So let's get started with pre-launching it. Let's remind ourselves of the actor VI and where pre-launching it sits. So pre-launching it is this little guy here. And if we double click it, we then click on the actor implementation, so the very top level implementation of pre-launching it, you'll notice on the block diagram it doesn't actually do anything. Instead, this is a placeholder for us to do things like user event references, or we could even send messages from this VI. Let's have a look at one of the implementations. So let's look at chat window interface pre-launching it. In the chat window interface actor, you can see that we're creating three different user events. We have a stop user event, a message user event, and a who's online user event. And you'll see how we're using those a bit later on. We're getting those references and bundling those into the actor's private data. However, remember if for some reason an error should occur, we should follow best practices and clean up those references straight away. So you'll notice that we have an error case here and a destroy events VI inside. If we have a look inside destroy events VI, notice how what we're doing is destroying those references. From pre-launch init, we can actually send messages as well. So if we right click, go into data communication, even act framework, we'd be able to read callers and cure and read self and cure as well. The one thing we mustn't do in pre-launch init is launch nested actors. So that's a key takeaway here. Don't try and launch nested actors in pre-launch init. If you do, your system will hang. Right, let's move on to the next override. It's time for actor core. Now we should already be quite familiar with actor core if you follow the series. But again, let's recap where it is in the actor VI. It sits right in the center here in the nested case structures. Now a key takeaway here is notice how actor core will not execute if an error comes out of pre-launching it. So we have the error wire coming here from pre-launching it. If an error comes through here, we go to the error case and we clean up some references. So actor core only executes if pre-launching it returns no error. Let's have a look at the top level implementation of actor core. So this VI should be familiar to all of you by now. I did a video on how we derived the actor core. Essentially, this is the message handling brain of the actor framework. Let's have a look at an example override of actor core. The first option is to use actor core as a user interface. So let's have a look at chat window interface actor core. So you can see the user interface is as we want. And on the block diagram, we have an event handling helper loop. This helper loop is going to just send messages whenever value change events occur. It's also going to react to user events. So when the user event is received, like this one, messages on the front panel will be updated. Just a quick thing to remember though, if you're creating references that you want to pass into the actor core, remember to do that before the parent's implementation of actor core. So by that I mean we have a couple of references here which we want to pass into the actor's private data, remember to do that before the parent's implementation of actor core, which we see here. Chat window model is an example of an actor core that isn't being used as a user interface. So let's have a look at another typical example. So if we open up chat window model, in this actor core, you can see the front panel is as standard. And on the block diagram, you'll see that we're launching a nested actor. But before we launch the nested actor, we've remembered to add some abstract messages to the actor's private data, as well as some extra information, such as name here. Then once we've launched the nested actor, we've got the nested actors in queue, 
involve we've bundled that into a calling actor's private data. And we do that before we get to the Paris implementation of actor call. Right, next override. Our next framework override is the handle error VI. Now that actually comes to us from inside the actor core. So if we open up handle error, and then the actor's implementation, now this should look familiar to everyone here, especially if you watch my video on how actors stop and what happens when an error occurs. So I'll let you go back to that video if you didn't watch it. So we might want to do an override of this VI to prevent certain behaviours. By default, handle error will cause your entire actor system to shut down if an error is received. Now, perhaps we want to prevent that from happening, or perhaps we want a dialog box to display when an error occurs. So to do that, we need an override. I've created an override in the server class or server actor, but I haven't implemented any new features yet. Let's implement two things that we might use when developing actor-oriented code. The first is for debugging. Let's say we keep getting this error, but we can't work out what it is and debt is too hard to read. So let's just display a simple error handler. To implement a simple error handler, you could go to dialog and user interfaces, simple error handler, and wire it like so. So now any error that occurs in your actor call will be displayed to the user, apart from error 43. Let's say we want to suppress a couple of errors so our actor system doesn't shut down, we could do that really simply just by adding in a case structure, put that in like so. And in this instance, we're going to be working in the error case and we could do things like unbundle that error to get the information, even remove certain errors. Next, override. The stop call override, we're also going to find inside the actor call. But it's actually just inside the stop VI. And then the override VI is this one here, the stop core. If we open up the stop core and the actor's implementation, we've been through this before in a previous video. This VI is actually going to send out stop messages to all of the nested actors of this actor. So basically, if a calling actor stops, all of its nested actors are going to stop uh, by default. Let's have a look at an override of stop core. So a reason why you might want to override stop core is to stop any helper loops or clean up references caused by your actors call. So let's have a look at chat window interface stop call. Inside this override, we have the parents implementation, even inside the destroy events VI, you can see we're cleaning up the references and also generating a user event to stop the event based helper loop inside actor call. If we have a look inside a different implementation, you can see we're doing exactly the same thing here. We're generating a user event to stop the event helper loop inside actor core, and then we're destroying that user event. Not much more to say, only we use this VI generally for cleanup. Let's go to override number five. So our fifth and final AF override today is going to be the handle last act core VI. Now this is actually going to be a message override. So if we tunneled into actor core, we could actually find it. So if we go into the receive message VI, then the do VI, and then look into actor framework last act do, and then inside here, go into handle last act, and this VI is going to execute when a nested actor stops. Let's have another look at actor.vi. So in actor.vi, one of the last things to execute is the send last app VI. This is going to send a message to the calling actor simply to say, hey, I'm a nested actor and I've stopped executing. It's going to send some information along with that message. That information is going to be three things. The last data that appeared in that nested actor, the nested actor's enqueue, and also the error status of the nested actor. When that message is received by the calling actor, two things are going to happen. The first is the calling actor is going to prune its registry. So it's going to look at, okay, who were all of my nested actors? Does this enqueue match any of these enqueues in my registry? If so, 
I'm going to remove it from the registry. And that's what this in place element structure is doing. So that section of code. The second section is the override VI here, which is the handle last act core VI. And inside here, we're going to look at that message data and then get the error information out. And if you watched one of my previous videos on what happens when an error occurs, it will all be explained then. However, I'm going to show you how I've overridden this core VI to prune my own registers. So let's close this. You then open up a different implementation. Let's say server. For every chat room that is launched, it's given its own status, its own name, and its own enqueuer. And they are being stored in three separate arrays. So when one of those chat rooms closes, we need to remove those line items from the arrays. The way we do that, getting the enqueuer, and we can do that by right clicking, going to data communication, actor framework, and then we have read actor, read caller to actor enqueuer, which is the one we're using here, and then read error report as well. So we're reading the enqueuer here, searching for it in the arrays, and if it is found, we are deleting the line items from our registers. We're then sending some updates to the other chat rooms that are still running. Another thing we're doing in this override is finding out how many chat rooms still exist. So if there are greater than zero chat rooms still existing, so i.e. one or more, then we're going to enable messaging, else we're going to disable messaging. And the final thing we're doing is calling the parent implementation of handle last act core. And if we didn't do that, we would actually get a broken run arrow. I hope that video was super useful to you all. As always, I'll leave a link to the code below. It'll be on my GitHub page. Please like, subscribe, comment, and leave any feedback you like. All right, cheers guys. Catch you next time.